Okay, here we go. Welcome to the Pantheon. I am Ray. I'm Evie. So, Evie, what is today's podcast uh, review about? It is about Captain Marvel. Last, last final tie-ins to the Endgame. It's directed and written by Anne uh, Bowden and Brian Fleck. Uh, and, of course, it's probably one of the last cameos, living, like, last legitimate cameos from Stan Lee. Yeah. So, this, okay, in terms of the big picture, this just adds a last piece to the puzzle of the, like, the character just showing up. It True. kind of explains her because realistic for those who've seen Endgame, which I'm pretty sure it's pretty much half the planet. Uh, her character's there's no introduction. She, her her character's just gone right into the movie right away, and this kind of allows you to understand that like, why how she's there and why she's why she's there, mm -hmm. and this kind of gives you the backstory. Did you like how they because uh, it's an origin story? Sorry, it's an origin story, but it's not told in a traditional way of telling an origin story. Like it's how it's in the middle. And then it kind of goes forward, but yet it's sort of jumbled up. You know, the, yeah. the, 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 the MacGuffin, or if you want, is this thing called a mind tracking machine where they kind of um, track her mind kind of yeah. thing. And then yeah. that's how it kind of leads into it. Uh, overall, like, how do you like that part of it? Like, um, you know, like, how, what did you think it, I guess what I'm saying is, like, do you like, do you like the way they kind of told that story? No, I like, a, for me, mm -hmm. a story that starts to a point mm -hmm. and then um, ends not going with Oh, back and forth? Back and forth. Yeah, because it's a little jarring. Uh, in the end, it does come together, but yeah, it's a little... Uh, it's interesting because there's a twist. Okay, you know, and the twist comes, uh, you know, with this, this uh, character, like who you think is good and who you think is evil. Yeah. Because uh, it goes against type. It subverts your expectation based on comic book and lore. It it's changes true. that. Uh, it, does, it does a gender swap. It does. It, it changes the villains who you think is going on. So, in that sense, I thought it did an amazing job of subverting my expectations into the film, yeah. and then still telling a good story of this character. Um, what, do you think of, what, what did you think of the soundtrack in this one? I like the soundtrack. It was pretty mm -hmm. good. Well, it, it stayed faithful to the whole time. I love Samuel L. Jackson in this film. I thought yeah, he's so too. charismatic. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. And, uh, and uh, what did you think of his makeup? This the, the de aging process on this thing. Very good, impressive. I didn't expect that. So. Yeah, you know, and considering he's seventy years old, he looked really good. Oh, definitely. The only time I would say that you could tell that it didn't really work is when he was running. You could tell that he's a yeah. like seventy-year-old man. But, That's true. Uh, but the, but the makeup was great, and yeah, for sure. he, and this is just, this is a Nick Fury. Sorry, this is a Nick Fury before he became hardened. So yeah, exactly. What did you think about the reveal about the eye? Because I think every so often he got he got hurt. They go, how's your ears? How's your head? How's your eye? Yeah. Okay. And then of course you find out what happens to you. Exactly. Him. We're not going to give it away, but no. Yeah, but it's like, interesting. Did though. you? Did, were you like disappointed? Was that a letdown, or was it okay with you? Were you okay with that actual result? Yeah. Were you satisfied with the the reveal of how it was? And on that reason, I say, say this is because there's a some fan, hardcore fans will say there's a scene in Winter Soldier where he talks to uh, Robert Redford's character. Mm -hmm. The last person I trusted, and I got this. Right. Or or I cared about. <laughs> So that, and then you realize, so when you realize in the context of what that was about, yeah. and you see how this kind of like relates to that, it, I I understand how people were kind of were upset about the, the the link between the two. Yeah, I thought it was. I think they would. It, it, come on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. But, <laughs> Uh, but the, I will say the one thing first. The one thing I do appreciate was the ending of the first Iron Man when he says, "Do you think the the world's bigger, the, the much bigger place than you thought?" Is yeah. this this kind of gives the uh, two thousand eight Iron Man a lot more backstory and a lot That's more uh, uh, significance to what he's saying, That's true. Uh, where it's coming from, because it doesn't. It wasn't that that part wasn't landing on a lot of people. Like you yeah. know, like well, how much does he know? Yeah. So, and then of course the, the the other complaint that you might have heard already is like, okay, so he knew Captain Marvel. So how come he didn't use the pager during the invasion of, 20, of New York City? Yeah, you're right. You know that. So that was the only the, that was the only uh, you know if you were looking too heavy at this, like what would be the argument like why he didn't use the pager then? Yeah, you know you're right. Huh. So Let's go to the Tesseract. This thing, they should have a story of like, the trials and relations of the Tesseract because this thing has traded hands no, throughout the MCU. Yeah. Um, Howard Stark left, found in the ocean, yeah. all looking for um, uh, Steve Rogers, yeah. and he, he was located in the ocean. And for the 40s till about the eight, 1980s, Stark had it, allegedly, you know. And then after, after he he gave up to um, to end up Bendix's character. Well, that's, but anyway, so the character was Marvel. Right. Yeah. Okay. So spoiler alert for those who didn't know. 
Uh, but they, they use the Tesseract to use the energy from that to create a light speed uh, uh, aircraft. And that's what, that's, that's what uh, our Project Pegasus was. It, it, was in, it was the security of S.H.I.E.L.D., NASA, uh, the, uh, the technology of NASA and the Air Force to combine to create this new technology. And that's what Pegasus was. Right. And uh, we see it again in the Avengers movie yeah. when, um, with, with Svelik and the whole thing. But they didn't know that, again, they didn't tap into the full potential of it, which was to, uh, the, the key was used to open gates to or transport you to from one end of the, the cosmos to the other. Right. What's it, the space so, gem is what it was called? Yes, yeah, it was a space yeah. gem, right? Yeah, this thing, it, it, it's one of those few uh, pieces of the puzzle that was uh, fl- uh, you know, sprinkled, out, sprinkled throughout the t- entire MCU uh, mm. you know, story. It's, yeah. it's part of the tapestry, and it was. Okay, here's the thing I do want to mention, talk to you about the comedy. Did you think our comedy was forced? Because sometimes I see, in terms of all the MC movies, the comedy, yeah. the tone switches back and forth. But I love all of it. I love how they just, even in the most darkest scenes, there's a great deal of brevity to it in yeah. comedy, and yeah. they, the way they do it is brilliant. Yeah. I just, for me, I thought with her character, it seems sort of forced. Like she's not. Uh, it was just different for her. Yeah. Um, I guess I don't know. Maybe her kind of being maybe a I don't want to say gender but mm-hmm. maybe or just maybe because she's a she's playing like a Cree, a Cree warrior and she's yeah. trying to take a fish out of yeah exactly water. yeah that, that's the only explanation I could I would give like just you know it, she's not human kind of she's not or known to be human at, right. at, at this point um, uh, and also I think in this version I'd, I'd say Cat Samuel Jackson really did a lot of it like, yeah he did. did a lot of love with the cat, yeah, the cat. Sure. Oh, the cat, and uh, Ben Mendelsohn. I think it props to him because uh, yeah. he's always known to play a villain. And again, they subvert expectations on this one. Mm. He plays um, such a suave character. He's actually Australian. I had no idea. Really? I didn't know that either. No, and what you're hearing is his actual Australian accent as okay. Talos, the uh, leader of the uh, scrolls. Okay. So that's him, actually, him talking in uh, mm. his own dialect or accent. Awesome. Didn't and and he was playing the human version. That's him doing the American accent. Oh, awesome. So cool. I, I thought that was really um, cool. Overall, wh- how would you rate this? Uh, in terms of like A, B, C? Um, um, it's for me, C. Yeah, I would give this a C plus. I okay. did not hate this. I actually enjoyed this quite a bit. So I'm Ray. I'm Abby. We'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you.